various weapons arts, including the art of the samurai sword. Aikido's founder, Jorge Uejibo Otome, who lived from 1883 to 1969, studied many weapon systems and incorporated their insight into the arts of Kendo. Tsujisa Tome Sensei is a direct student of Otome's. Born in Japan in 1937, Tome Sensei began his study of Aikido at the age of 19. In 1960, he entered Aikikai Honbu Dojo, headquarters of Aikido Central Organization, as an Ibuchishi, or live-in system, a position that he held for 15 years. While O Sensei rarely, if ever, offered systematic training in sword technique, he did offer more spontaneous demonstrations of the sword skill. Several of his students, including Tome Sensei, have attempted to systematize what they took to be the basic essence of this demonstration. Tome Sensei also trained under O Sensei's son, Kisumaro Ueshiba Sensei, Aikido's present dojo. Like Dojo, Tome Sensei has stated that Aikido's basic purpose is to help people live better, to make their spirits blossom, and so to improve the world. Tome Sensei often traveled with O Sensei and served as his Ushiki demonstrator. For about six years after the founder's death, Tome Sensei stayed on as an instructor at Humbu Dojo. In 1975, he moved to the United States. In the late 70s, he demonstrated for the United Nations peacekeeping forces and for the delegates to the United Nations. After moving to the United States, Tome Sensei established an Aikido organization, Aikido Schools of Uejima, which is recognized by Aikikai Honbu Dojo. For Tome Sensei, Aikido is a Budo, and this means that its aim is nothing less than the education of human instinct. On this view, the purpose of Aikyo is not to prepare us for hurting others, or even for defending ourselves, but to lead us beyond petty selfishness to a state of noble concern, respect, and compassion. In 1994, at the celebration of Tome Sensei's 40th year in Aikido, he was presented with a letter from President Bill Clinton. In the letter, President Clinton commends Tome Sensei for a lifetime devoted to promoting nobility of spirit and civility of conduct. sword from underneath is a mistake, since it requires too much of the right thumb. In proper grip, both hands are run inward and placed on the handles of the palm. Accustomed to training with wooden swords, some Aikidoka place their right hands too far up on the sword or extend their index fingers without a blade. A real Wurtsuba would preserve this grip, as of course the blade sharpens. There is a space between the tsuba and the right hand. The sword can be moved more freely than when the right hand is pushed up against it. Taking a proper stance, or kamai, can lead to the integration of body, mind, and spirit, an integration that has helped us in our daily life. Many people think only about the sword stick. Having this 
establish the bridge, one closes off an opponent's opportunity for attack. Proper kamae, the mind, body, and spirit unifying, leads to control of the sword. When deflected, the sword quickly and naturally returns to center. strong center when it's very stable. This is a good example of a proper stance. The knees are relaxed, the shoulder and arms are relaxed, and there is a clean, strong focus. There are many different kamae. In this basic one, called the Segan, the tip is pointed at the opponent's throat, upper lip, or eye. This is Geran. sharp, the sword cuts, but does not hit or chop. If the sword blade deviates to a great leap vertically, it cannot cut. Also, the swordsman should observe and respect the sword's body. The beginning of the cut must always be relaxed and extended, like casting a fishing rod. At the top of the strike, the sword extends up, the power moving through. side of the head, and the cut is diagonal. Here, as in the other cuts, relaxation is important. Shoulders, elbows, and wrists should be relaxed, and the weight of the sword should be used in the cut. In battle, the sword cannot stop. Movement must be flowing and continuous, as illustrated by this sword even, which starts with Paso Geyan. This next Suburi, in which a guard position alternates with head strike called yoga, illustrates the fluidity with which offense changes defense and defense back to offense. In this suhuri, a thrusting motion, D, is followed by a chomak cut. Here, as in the other suhuri, proper breathing is important, in through the nose, Sensei cut diagonally to his left, and the Suburi can, of course, be adapted for use from your bird posture. In this, the final Suburi of this series, Saochome Sensei begins from a Hasso position, cuts diagonally downward, reverses the blade. Sensei again demonstrates Shomen Suburi. While movements of this sort can be practiced alone, they can also be practiced with a training partner in the role of opponent. The point of such exercises is not to compete or even to prepare for competition, but to develop abilities necessary for practicing Aikido, primarily the ability to focus and the ability to harmonize. This exercise, partners alternately cut Shomen. In this Suburi, Saochome Sensei cuts diagonally, flowing from a cut to the left that begins from a stroke position into 
it up to the right, that begins the reverse function. In the third practice, based on this theory, Satomi Sensei forms diagonal cuts from her Frank Bell cut to a man. The important point in this looping is where you just relax, flowing, continuous movement. Based on this theory, Satomi Sensei performs a looping movement as if partnered once again with Hacho Men. From the time Satomi Sensei begins Hacho Gedan, the time he returns to this position, the sword has glanced off his partner's sword four times. In this Woody, Satomi Sensei thrusts the key and then steps back into a defended position. associated with this Udwiti clearly illustrate the harmonious nature of these paired practices. This Udwiti involves a deflection, not a true strike. sword moves in large circles. In this paired practice, Satomi Sensei moves through the Tsuburi as his partner repeatedly strikes to a man. stroke cutting through both the enemy's sword and spirit. The term kumi has been dismissed and the term kaki moved forward. To study the effect of kaki has, Aikido could be learned about proper distance reacting to other people's movements, and, most important, about unification, communication, and patterns of dialogue. Despite the appearance, the participants in the Kumikaki are not fighting, or even training to fight, as they might be in our study schedule or Iaido. They study Aikido. The principles underlying the empty-handed practice of Aikido and those underlying Kumikaki are quite the same. Satomi Sensei's system, the first five kumikaki are considered primary. Here is the first. 
approaching number two, despite that of number one. But then the initial shonen strike develops, the defending swordsman shields himself rather than entering. The shielding movement leads directly to a yokomen strike. Guarding against the strike, the initial attacker leaves his left side open. The other swordsman strikes into the yokomen, thus cutting his partner's blade and ending in kumitate number one. Number one, the concepts of Madubashi and Ichibiki are illustrated by a dark strike. Here, in Kumitachi number three, these concepts are illustrated by an upward movement to put the flesh with upward shonen strike. The ending of the Kumitachi is like that of the previous. how defense can flow into offense. In the practice of the kumitachi, defense and offense are not separate, but one leads into the other. Sometimes, the person who initially attacks allows his partner's upward deflection to move the tip of his sword far off the center line. This is a mistake, as it leaves an opening into which the opponent can strike. It is very important to hold the center. With one sword tip on the center line, one can defend or renew the attack.
changes the most common sword to protect his legs. The lesson of the Kumiyachi is that if we attack blindly or overcommit ourselves to one motion, we may open ourselves to counterattacks. Initial showman strike is overcommitted. The swordsman cannot easily shift to defense. After saw Tomitaze blocks the attack to his leg, his opponent thrusts towards his right side. Defensive movement opens up his left side, and the opponent thrust is just open. The kumikachi ends like the previous three. First movement of this kumikachi, Satomitase writes from hostile position in an attempt to deflect his opponent's sword. If the deflecting sword swings through, it leaves an opening. As in similar moves in the previous kumikachi, the deflection should leave the tip of the sword on the center line, so that the sword can thrust directly in. The opponent shields against the thrust, and then strikes the opening. Satome Sase deflects with the strike downward, taking care, once again, not to open himself to a second attack. Sao 
opponent does a cut suffer, the opponent steps back. And as the opponent cuts do, basome sape reverses his stance.
be a Satsuma Sensei insists that in studying the Sumitachi, we are studying Aikido itself. The answer lies in part in the traditional position of Satsu Jinkan from Katsu. While the sword of Satsu Jinkan is wielded to punish or kill an enemy, the sword of Katsu Jinkan is wielded with control to restore order and to protect. From the standpoint of technique, Satsu Jinkan and Katsu Jinkan are similar. The difference lies in the swordsman's intention, the human spirit behind the sword. As a result of the difference in intention, the outcome differs. A victory of Satsu Jinkan leads to destruction, an ending. A victory of Katsu Jinkan leads not to destruction, but to the possibility of a new beginning. Accordingly, the purpose of Kumitachi is not a revealed point of technique. Their purpose is to manifest Katsu Jinkan spirit which transcends hostility and which therefore goes beyond traditional martial techniques.